the hill moon shining on Georgia side. I'm so tired I can hardly drive. Back jacked up from a tail don't drag so Hey. Uh, just as promised, look, uh, what we're going to do is we're gonna do a real quick review, but we're going to talk about chasing gravity points. Uh, and gravity points in brewing are directly connected uh, because it all has to do with the alcohol by volume that you wind up with in the end. So before we get to that point, and I don't want to insult anybody's intelligence, if you already know this, just, just skip through it. But, but if you want a real quick refresher, uh, this is what you'll see on the side of the uh, hydrometer. And you know, your hydrometer is marked, some of them come several different ways, multicolors. I like them, the ones that are just real simple. They've got a balling scale, the specific gravity, and they've got the percent of uh, potential alcohol. Uh, it's just three scales. Uh, but this is how you'll see them listed. And it starts at like 990, then 1.000. If you drop this into a, a beaker of water, it should float at 1.000. That's your data point, that's water. And then it starts going up by 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Now, in general terms, when you get a bunch of brewers together, they'll call a 1.020, they'll call that 1020. Um, but I believe, in, you know, look, English is a precise language when utilized precisely. Uh, it's the same thing with math. So I always say it's 1.020. So don't get confused about that. When you see this, sometimes people will say, hey, it's, it's floating here on the three zero line. My water is 1.300, no, it's actually 1.030. So we're gonna talk about this. Uh, now, what you'll also notice is uh, there's some lines that break it up. So of course, anything from zero to 10, you know, your, your lines are there's five lines, each line is equal to two. So it could be 1.00, like uh, here, 1.012, or 1.014, 8, 10, up, up to 1.020. Now, um, for those of you who have tried the George Washington already, and you've done the George Washington recipe, you know that once everything ferments, and it's uh, particularly wine, wine will ferment all the way down to one or below one, which is lighter than water. So it means you've got a lot of alcohol in there. Uh, the George Washington won't do that. It's got what we call, I call schmutz. Uh, the schmutz factor in there is about 0 0.005. So you'll always wind up somewhere after fermentation with it floating somewhere around this neighborhood, which is just a little bit above water. And that's just because of the schmutz that's in there. Uh, if you're using like a pure sugar wash, a sugar wash will ferment all the way down to one or just slightly below one. And that's fine. Uh, you'll know when it's done. Uh, when it floats at that level or when there's no more activity in your, uh, in your fermenter. So what we'll need in order to figure out gravity points and the percent of alcohol is just two things. Uh, we need to have the hydrometer. Uh, I use a calculator because it's a whole lot easier, but you can do a longhand method as well. And what we're going to do is we're, we'll take an example. Uh, let's say, for instance, and I'm looking on here because I want to find one that everybody can relate to is 1.076, 1.076, 1 1.0, down here, seven, two, two, four, six. If our initial gravity, when we start, is 1.076, that means we've got a lot of fermentable sugars and potential alcohol in our fermenter. All we've got to do now is allow the yeast to eat for this number to start dropping all the way back to one. The interesting thing, though, about your hydrometer is if you roll it over from 1.076, you'll notice that it also corresponds to the line marked 10%. That's 10% potential alcohol. And the reason that's there is just to kind of give you an idea, but we're going to do the math completely. If we take our initial gravity, 1.076, and that's where it started, once it finishes fermenting, let's say it fermented all the way down to 1, and we subtract 1.000, we end up with 0 0.076. Now here's the way this works. Our starting gravity, right here, minus our final gravity, right here, equal, oh, well, that number times 131.25, one, 
It's a constant. Just don't worry how you, that's, it just works that way. There's a couple of different ways to do this, this is the easiest. This will give you your percent alcohol by volume. So now we could do that longhand, or I just use a calculator, 0 0.076 times 131.25 equals, this would equal 9.975. That's pretty close. So that's why that scale is there. The scales are just kind of give you an idea, but you can work out the long hand, and we are just shy of 10% of alcohol by volume. Now, what does that tell us? We're going to use that term 10% or that figure 10% and say that's, that's where we were, 1.076 down to 1. We're going to use that in our next example. And I'm going to tell you what that means or show you what that means. And this is where we come up with the idea of chasing gravity points which is so important in a lot of aspects, but it can get you in trouble if you, that's all you're doing. Let's take a five gallon batch. So this is five gallons. And it's fermenting away, it's going crazy. And you've taken your initial reading, and your initial reading was 1.076. Okay, after about 10 days or so, you decide to take your final reading. And your final reading is 1.000. Well, great, 0 0.076. You already know that that's going to equal somewhere around real close to 10%. Well, that means that from here to here is five gallons. How much of five gallons of that wash is going to be alcohol? Well, 10% of it. So 10% is actually a half a gallon. So that means that within this five gallons, one half a gallon of that is pure ethyl alcohol. Now all we've got to do is get it out of there. And that's, that, that takes you to the next step of distilling. But you know that that's, there's that much in there. If you hit 20%, well of course you're going to have one gallon. So you see what I'm talking about is about chasing these gravity points. Um, and if you focus solely on chasing gravity points, sometimes you lose a little bit of the character or the flavor of your wash. Um, a, a lot of commercial distilleries are looking for 7 to 9%. And some, they like to hit 11. So, so they're not really shooting for the stars when it comes to gravity points, but they're looking more for character and flavor. Uh, so they reduce the amount of quantity uh, and focus on quality in a recipe. And you can do the same thing. You can do it with 17%, you can do it with 18%. As long as you reach that happy medium where you've got the flavor you're looking for as well as the amount of alcohol you're looking for so that you don't waste your effort to get what you're getting out on the end. Now, let's talk briefly about, very, very briefly, about wine yeasts. Wine yeasts are good to about 18%, which is pretty darn good because it puts you in this area. Uh, Fleischmann's bread yeast is good for about 3%, 3, 4, sometimes 5%. But uh, y if you take that into consideration, you know, 10% is going to be a half a gallon. Uh, you're looking at a pint, maybe, maybe a little over a pint. Um, it, it's up to you whether your effort is worth it or not, uh, plus the flavors that it carries with it. So you've got these options. Um, beer yeast, some beer yeast will go as high as 8 to 9%. Um, so. I offer that to you as food for thought.